everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I wanted to talk about some new functionality that was released recently, and that's Microsoft List for Teams. In this video, I'll give you a high level overview of what Microsoft List is, and then show how you can start using it today within Microsoft Teams. But first, here's the intro. So I'm going to keep it really simple here. All Microsoft List is, is an evolution of SharePoint List. Don't get me wrong, I'm really excited about Microsoft List and it's really cool, but at its core, it's SharePoint List evolved. As part of this evolution for SharePoint List, we're going to get a lot of new things. For one, you'll have a Microsoft List app in Office 365 that will aggregate all the lists that you have. So no more having to hunt around and remember what SharePoint site has the list you're trying to get to. This will be a one-stop shop to see list and create new list. Along those same lines, you'll have a new mobile application for Microsoft List so that you can author, create, and edit new list all in line in your mobile app. There's also going to be a new concept of personal list. So when we think of traditional SharePoint list, those are really intended to be made and used for a group of people. So you create those, say, on a team site for your IT team, and the whole team can view and access that list. But with Microsoft list, we're going to get this new personal list concept that's going to allow us to create lists intended just for a single person to use. So these personal lists are going to be tied to your OneDrive and allow you to create one-off list for your personal consumption. So say you need a list to help you track your budget or some personal things like that, you could do that with these new personal lists inside of Microsoft List. Another cool thing that Microsoft List is going to bring is some pre-built templates. You'll have rich and robust templates for event management, asset management, task, and more. You're also going to get a built-in lightweight rules engine. So in those scenarios where you need some very simple type of logic in your forms, you'll be able to do that with these built-in rules. And then finally, what I wanted to touch on and talk with you all about today is a new Microsoft list experience inside Teams so that you can create new lists and edit them in line all within Microsoft Teams. So I know the next thing that you're probably wondering is when will Microsoft list be available? So Microsoft list for Teams is generally available. So everyone should have that in their tenant now. And that's what I'm going to show you today. For Microsoft list as a whole though, so that application within Microsoft 365 and the mobile app and all of that, that's still being released. So right now it should be 100% released for those targeted released customers. And this is September 2020. And what Microsoft's targeting is hopefully by the end of October 2020, this will be released general available to everyone. And that's education and government tenants as well. I'm not on a targeted release tenant, so I can't show you the full-fledged list capability right now. But as soon as that hits my tenant, I will definitely do another follow-up video on this showing some of the full-fledged capabilities. But for now, let's focus on how to integrate the Microsoft List app within Teams. To get started working with Microsoft List inside of Teams, you're going to go to your left rail, click on the More Apps, and search for List. Click on the List icon, and then select add to a team. To initially set this up, you'll need to search for a team and choose the channel that you wanna add this to. So I'll just add this to the general channel of our HR team. Then select set up a tab. Once it's done configuring, click save. And now you'll have Microsoft list embedded as a tab inside your channel. So from this list app inside of Teams, you can either create a new list or add an existing list. Let's walk through the create a new list process. You'll see with Microsoft List, we have several built-in templates that we can use, or we're able to start from blank, start from an Excel file, or from an existing list. Each of these templates will have a combination of fields and formatting applied to them. So let's take the Asset Manager template, for example, just to see what some of these templates look like. When you select one of these templates, it's going to show you a live working preview of the template. So I can see what columns are here and what formatting is applied. Then when I'm ready, I can just select use template. Then it's going to prompt me to give this new list a name and I can put in a description and then a color and an icon because similar to if you work with Power Apps, you know that we have an icon and a color for the Power App 
image, so we'll have the same thing for these lists. Right now, I don't believe you can upload your own custom icons like you can with Power Apps, but I assume that's something that might be coming down the road eventually. And once you're done, click Create. And now you see that has replaced my tab with the new list that we created. So let's kind of walk through the list experience. Let's walk through adding a new item by clicking the new item button. You'll see that we have the new list form experience that takes up the full width of the screen. So I can come in and add in any information here. So obviously, since this is just an evolution of SharePoint list, it's going to look very similar to the SharePoint list you're already used to working with. We have all the same different field types that we're used to in SharePoint. We have drop downs, single line of text, date fields, and the ability to add attachments. So let's save this. And this particular template is applying some column formatting to the items. So if we look at, say, the status column and click on the drop down, go to column settings and format this column. We see that there's a format applied called choice pills. So we can click edit styles on that and make any tweaks if we want to for the different colors that show here. Just like in your SharePoint list with Microsoft list, you have a grid view. So if you click edit in grid view, it just gives you a nice easy to use Excel like interface for entering in a bunch of data at once. So we can go in tab through the different inputs and quickly add information. Clicking exit grid view will save the changes that you just made and take you back to the normal view. One of the great things about Microsoft list is the responsive out of the box. So if I go shrink down my browser window, you'll see that it adjusts accordingly. And this is for both the list and the input form also. So it reduces that down to one column and then moves to three columns once you expand out your browser. That also means that this will work on your desktop and your mobile devices seamlessly. If you click these dots next to edit and grid view, you see that we have those same SharePoint list type functionality to export to Excel. And then there's an open in SharePoint tab so that if we need to open this list inside of SharePoint to get maybe some additional features, then we can do that. Now you'll see what I did since Microsoft list are an evolution of SharePoint list. When I created this, I associated it with a team. What's happening in the back end is when you associate the list with a team, it's going to go in and add that list to the underlying SharePoint site that that team is a part of. So I'll just walk through a couple more scenarios here. Let's move on to a different team site. We'll go to our IT site, for example. So we can just do this directly from the add a tab section, select the list option, click save. Let's walk through the new list creation process. So we'll do create a list and we'll do the blank list option. So we can create one from scratch. Let's do a list to track deployments, just click create. And you'll see this gives us a blank canvas with just a title field in here. So we can go through and click add column. So for example, we can add in a date time field and we'll see the inline create column experience, all very similar to your traditional SharePoint modern list. And we have the ability to apply that list formatting directly in here, just like we would in normal SharePoint. So we can go to column settings and format this column. And we have the different built in point and click formats that we can apply, such as this one where we can highlight in red if something is overdue. And when we looked at these list of columns, one thing that you might have noticed which is missing is a lookup column. So if you need to use a lookup column, you'll wanna click those dots and open this list in SharePoint. And then you still have the ability to click add column, go to more, and that will take you to the classic experience where you can still add a lookup column. And with these lists that you create, since you're creating them within a team, it's going to automatically inherit the permissions of the team that you created it in. So if we click on this little information icon on this list that we just created, that's going to open the detail pane and we can see who has access to this particular list. I can see four groups have access and these correlate to the permissions of this particular team. We also have the ability here to add direct access. So I can do kind of one-off permissions here if I need to, to this particular list. The last thing I wanted to look at was if we go into create a list, let's look at the from existing option. So this is pretty cool. So if you have another list out there and you kind of want to create something similar, then you can use an existing list as a template to base your new list off of. So when you click that from an existing list option, it's going to give you this screen where you can select the different sites in your SharePoint, and then it will show the list in that site. So if I wanted to create a list similar to this onboarding task, I can just select that, click next, and then we get that same list screen. 
and I can click create and it's going to duplicate that list template in here for me. So that's really all that I wanted to show for you today with this integration of Microsoft List and Teams. Again, once I have Microsoft List fully deployed into my tenant, I'll make some more videos on it. If you have any ideas for topics you want me to cover in future videos, please drop me a note in the comments. And if you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.